guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back checking out what I am up to. Yes, in today's video, we are dumpster diving. We are using up all that supplies that we have purchased for other projects and we are getting them used up in today's video. I am sharing my vision with you in the process of what I'm doing to these items that are Pinterest, TikTok inspired. I've seen other people make stuff and I'm like, hey, I've got leftover supplies in my craft room. I can make these and they're really super easy. say yes these are easy so this is a leftover paper bags that I had from that snowflake craft and yep we got a recycled a thrift store found wreath and I think it was a Walmart but of course I thrifted it and so yeah this is really minimal what you need a pair of scissors some wire nippers to cut that wreath and some tape so first thing i'm going to take the tag off and we are going to prep our wreath by cutting the wires so there's a natural little broken one already <laughs> so that is where i'm going to make my other cut so we need something to be able to attach our paper bags to so i'm just going to go ahead with some good nippers and cut that wire <laughs> Nope, you're not taping these paper bags on to the wire form. You're just taping off those sharp edges so that it does not tear your paper. So on both sides, I'm just putting some masking tape over there, covering up those sharp edges. Now that we have a space in between all the sharp edges so it does not tear a bag, we can start doing this craft. And all we have to do is cut a hole in the bottom of the bag. So at first I thought, okay, well, I'll just slice it not to waste any of it, but quickly decided that the easiest way was just to cut off that bottom altogether. And I wasn't actually sure how many bags I was going to need, so I just started cutting a few. The nice thing about these bags is they come in packs of 100. So now that I have my hole and I can fit my hands in there, yep, it's like we're making trash. You're just going to scrunch it all together, leaving a circle in the middle, like a hole in the middle, so you can slide it right on that wire. So it can be as loose, as tight as you want. And voila, look at how easy this is. So yep, you just keep on doing that same thing, just scrunching it the way that you like it, whatever appealing to you, whatever color of paper bags you like. And then, yep, you just keep doing that same thing over and over again until you've filled up this full, this whole wire wreath. So yep, we just keep scrunching up like we're making trash out of those lunch sacks. So yep, you just keep as full and as tight. I don't want to see any of the wreath. You can make it loose. You can, it's really minimal cost here, but what a big statement this is already making. I'm getting into the end where I'm going to have to tape my two pieces together, but I still need a few more scrunchies to fill the space. So I just took a couple clamps. I'm sure you could use some clothespins, also just something to hold it back while you're trying to get a few more on there. And now I have got all the scrunchies I want. I'm going to push that back as much as I can because now I'm going to tape those two pieces together. Yeah, as simple as I cannot believe how simple this is. So just I'm just going to make sure that I've taped it both ways, making sure that it's nice and tight and taped together. And then take those clamps off. And now I have one solid wreath. Now 
I need to add something to hang it. You could leave it as is, but in my stash of stashes, I have this webbing that I have had. I reupholster, haven't reupholstered in a while, but this is in that dumpster diving into my craft room. And I absolutely think that this webbing matches this paper bag and that little bit of black is just nice and simple for me. And if you make one of these at home, have fun with it. Pick out what you like. And a little bit of hot glue to keep the two pieces together will hold this nice and tight. And I'm actually going to wire a hanging, a little hanger on the, the back piece, make it the ease of hanging it onto the wall. So for my next craft, I'm going to be doing some music sheets out of these songbooks. They're the perfect size for the crafts. And these were actually sent me, sent to me by a viewer, Marla. Yes, I'm finally getting to them. So I'm super excited. Some of the ones that are still bound, I'm going to leave as is and just use in display in my own home. But we got a couple that her dad actually had signed this. So... Um, I'll probably work on this little sheet that's a little worse for wear. There's plenty of pages in there, but look how cute these pages are. So I have to thank her for shipping these to me. We all know shipping is not cheap. So anytime somebody feels inclined to send me anything, I want to give them a shout out. And it's been a few weeks, but I just now I'm getting to the cycle of a craft. So yes, thank you so much. So yes, we are going to be making another wreath. And the nice thing about the two wreath forms I am using today is they are wreath forms that you can still buy. Even though I thrifted them, you can definitely buy them out and about. So I love, I love a good thrift store find. And you being, coming up with a idea to use these beautiful music sheets for, it's a shame to have them just laying around all broken up like that. So the first thing I'm going to do, take off these broken pages pages and then remove the rest of the pages from that spine. So for our assistant today is going to be a pencil. Yep, a pencil. So what you're going to do, and I'm sorry that I kind of got how to camera hit it here now and again so i am apologizing early for that so yep look at that so you fold that paper in half and you just scrunch it like you're going to be tossing it into the trash uh that little the little bit of hot glue at the end is what i got out of focus i am so sorry you guys and so you take that hot glue and that pencil and you push that into so you're not pushing it into the foam what you're doing is that hot glue is drying and attaching that piece of paper to the foam you just hold it there until you feel like that hot glue is drying and then you remove that pencil and there you have your first piece of paper. And yes, we're going to repeat this a whole bunch of times, but it really is a simple craft. It looks like a hot mess at first, but trust me, oh, what a statement piece this makes. And no, this little pamphlet that was left over would not was not enough. So when I get to putting more on, I do variegate it with one of the other booklets. And we are going to be cutting some of the paper. At first, we're, for the tear effect, we're going to just be using the full sheets on this bottom layer. So unlike the first wreath I did, grab yourself a cup of coffee, put some good music on, a book on tape, or watch a TV while you're doing this. This one was a little bit more time consuming, but there is always those crafts that are nice to watch your favorite TV program too. So yep, I grabbed myself a coffee and I'm just going to sit back and enjoy scrunching up some paper. I've got my inner done. Now I'm going to work on the outside layer of this length of the paper. I like this to be able to hang, so I'm going to attach my hanging system now. Not after it's done, now. So I'll be able to get in between all this paper. So just whatever gauge wire you have, I'm going to twist it so the hanging system's towards the back. If you forget, well, you can always create something to figure out how to hang it, but I'm remembering to add it to it now. 
So now that we have this layer done, I am going to be cutting my paper sheets into three quarters. So all I did was just take a, my um, scrapbooking cutter to cut paper and cut them down. Pretty simple. So just uniform, same length. That way it will tear in. So you won't be overlapping having the same length. It's going to make this really full. So it's the same exact process of scrunching it around that pencil, putting a little dab of hot glue on the end, and sticking it to the foam. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to find my empty space and variegate it every other one. As I work around the inside and work around the outside yet again. So now we are, that area is complete. Look how full it's becoming. So now we're using half sheets. So this is where it took a whole, it did take that whole booklet, but well worth it. So I have the half, the full sheet at the bottom, the three quarter we just did. And now we're going to be complete, complete this wreath with three more layers, but it's just going to be the half sheet of paper. So yet again, that same process. And I'm just finding that hole in between the other two to make this. And this honestly took me about two and a half hours. I'm not kidding you, but it is so beautiful. And then I kind of gave up on pushing the pencil in. It was just kind of awkward when we got to this stage. So I just used the pencil to scrunch my paper up and then for the hot glue and then took it off the pencil to add it onto the foam. Now to finish this up, we just need to cover up the rest of that green. One more line of the half sheets around and we have this beautiful statement piece of a wreath. up are these frames and yes I, who, who else has a weak moment at the thrift store that you pick up these should probably go into the trash frames or and then you're like oh well what am I going to do with these so this is the perfect craft at this time of the year for these frames oh you know I'm not throwing these in the trash so first off I've got to remove the nails get the hanging system I don't want to completely um take away the age and the character so I'm going to leave the backs as is this time which is unusual for me but take out any nails that have been left behind for wherever the picture has gone that is no longer there. Since these don't have any picture any glass or anything like that I need to create my own back so all I'm going to do is take some leftover cardboard some packing material and I'm going to just trace I'm going to make sure that I'm getting into the inside not the outside of the frame but that little lip on the back to make sure I have the exact size that I need on the frame for this backing so then I'm just going to take an exacto knife and a ruler and cut off what I need Now I am going to paint these frames up and I want to make it quick and easy. So I'm going to do the crackling, which is very quick and easy, surprisingly. So just the Dollar Tree glue, like your Elmer's glue, I'm just going to squirt it on and then take a paintbrush and wipe it around. But I need my glue to be dry just a little bit just where it gets that skim coat on the top it's not completely dry but it's just a little little dry so I'm just using a heat gun to help me achieve that now that I've done that I'm going to move on to painting so now I've got my kills paint and primer whatever paint you want but it is one coat <laughs> so it's a nice heavy coat and you really don't want to go back over where your glue was because you're going to add the paint to it and it's going to reactivate it and it'll change what your crackle effect will be so it is a nice heavy <laughs> um a full paint brush on your first uh, first and only coat Thank you. 
And you can let these just dry naturally, or you can take that heat gun and just help it crack along. I enjoy watching that reaction of it crackling. And now on my second frame, I'm going to do black, just my black onyx ready to use paint from Walmart. Yep, two different kind of paints here, um, two different colors. Oh, but I know that this black will go well with this gold showing through underneath when it crackles. So same thing, heavy, heavy filled up a paintbrush and try not to go back and forth, just kind of adding it to the frame. Are you wondering what I was going to be making with these pieces of cardboard and these frames? So I'm still working. Yeah, I dived right in. Look, I have some fabric. I have some linen. I have just random pieces that I have picked up at the thrift store that I want to use up. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making some flags. So to cover up my cardboard, I have this leftover that I just couldn't pass up. I don't even know what it was used for, but I'm going to use this as my backing to cover up this cardboard. I figured out the design that I want to use on my backing. Even though most of it's going to be covered up with the flag, I'm just going to hot glue it on. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and cut off that excess so it'll fit into that frame. This is the piece of ticking stripe that I had thrifted and I made some pillows for a couch. And these are that leftover piece I just can't ever throw away. So this is perfect. I love the stripes. I'm a black and white girl, so I'm going to be making some black and white flags. So now I'm just trying to figure out what size I wanted to take up that it shows. I still want some on background to show, but I wanted the flag to take up most of the space. So I'm doing, doing a couple little nips so I can take my rotary cutter and cut some straight lines. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this white piece. I'm not sure if it was a napkin, what it was, but it was something I had and it was perfect to coordinate with this. So I'm just going to yet again figure out Maybe, I don't know, I have a stash of stars, y'all, if you're not noticing here. I told you I was dumpster diving. I was going to find me some stars to use today on these. So, yeah, 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 I keep on going, don't I? But, yep, yeah, I'm going to figure out what size, which star I like, which size I want need to make my white. And, I, of course, I'm going to go for the rusty, crusty one. So now that I have my white square cut out, I'm going to be attaching this all together. So I'm using the hemmed fuse tape, the same tape that I used to make curtains, and I just recently used it on that little dress form. So I'm just going to, as I said, I'm using up what I have in my craft store, but this is all stuff that you could purchase, and I hope I am inspiring you to use up some of your stash. All my rusty crusty stars came out of some floral arrangement that I thrifted and taken apart and I always salvage these I always save these so I just need to snip that wire off as best as I can and then glue it on using it some hot glue when my framers dry I am going to sand it just a little bit but look how that's going to look I'm so excited to get these together so I'm going to take some sandpaper I want to do a little bit more distress and I want to look a little bit more aged the crackle is nice but you can add two techniques together I want some of that wood to show through and I want to make sure on the back side that because that's a lot of paint that drips on the side that I get that nice and smooth and then to attach my cardboard to make so it does not move, you could tape, but or use these g g glazing like pins that you would use for windows, which of course I thrifted. I told you I got I I 
I, I pick up the weirdest things in the thrift store. I know sometimes Chris looks at me, but I, they do make sense when it comes to projects like this. So you just slide them in. You can use a flathead screwdriver. This is my staple removing tool that I'm using. They actually make a tool. I know Chris has one to you to do this with, but I, of course, couldn't find it in the workshop. So that way, this will just be nice and tight. I will be adding a hanging system to the back of this so somebody can hang it when they purchase it. And of course, I'm reusing one that, this is a lightweight one, so I'm reusing one that I actually took off another piece. I have a problem without throwing things away. How about you all? For the black frame, I'm going with something just a little bit different. I have some leftover tea stain, coffee stain dye drop cloth that I had for those flowers that I just made, along with the black stripes that I have, came from some pillowcases that I had that I actually reused on some picnic baskets. It's that same concept. I'm just trying to guesstimate what size I want my flag to be on my board. I love that I had some black and white stripes in my stash and rusty stars. So just trying to make it size appropriate. It's kind of a nice little, you don't have to be that perfect. You just can be that perfectly imperfect that I absolutely love when we're crafting. And I'm really working around that corner edge. I really like how that stained right there so I'm working my whole square for where I'm going to put my star around that spot. For this one this is a little bit thicker of fabric so I think hot glue is my best better little you can still use the hem tape I like the hem tape I didn't think it was going to show through like the hot glue might have done on that I don't know if it would have but it's just nice to show two different techniques and so I'm just getting it all hot glued together. I do have a littler star that's wired. I just need to, oh, oh, I did that one just broke off. I don't really need to cut too much of it off. Just hot glue it on. And then, you know, of course, I got it all glued together. And I'm like, uh, I, that, I don't like that background. It's too matchy. I can't, uh, yeah, so I'm going to, yep, good thing that I used the hot glue on this one. I don't think the hem tape would have came off as easily. So, yes, I'm going to remove my flag and change out my backing. Oh, I like it a lot better on this burlap background. How about you? Now, when I picked up this little frame in the thrift store, I'm like, I already liked how it was painted, but I don't really need the glass. And then yet again, there's that thrifted primitive type of flag. So all I'm going to do is remove this glass at first. And I'm going to hot glue this burlap onto that piece of cardboard. I didn't have to cut one. This already had a backing. I love the three-dimensional look that this gives by putting the frame on the outside and not putting it inside the frame. So I'm just going to hot glue it in place and I'm going to have to cut off that piece of wood hanging over the frame. I'm going to go ahead and add a few more of the rusty stars I have in my stash. And then this is just a really simple makeover. you like to see another super easy one so this is uh, a frame it's got burlap it has a clippy on it and I had this thrifted primitive flag I cut the flag off the pole I'm just gonna clamp it on I'm gonna use a little bit more of that hem double stick tape to tape the flag down and then i'm going to go ahead and add a few of the wooden stars that i had left over from a christmas garland that i had made
So now my last one isn't as easy as those last two, but I've had these two pieces rolling around way too long and now I'm going to try to figure out what to do with them. I guess it's all about timing because this galvanized is really shiny. I can't remember if it was leftover for something or I thrifted it. That's how long it's been around. And look at I put the wrong lid on the wrong patina. Oops. <laughs> so now I'm going to be using some of the brown rust patina along with some of the red rust patina to give a little bit of age to the super shiny galvanized. And I know I could have put the patina to look like a flag, but I thought something a little bit different. I've been doing a lot of flags there. So I'm just going to actually put the star in the center. So I have some of these stars that, of course, I thrifted. These wooden stars along with some leftover, bigger, rusty, crusty ones that I have to cut the wire off. I kind of like it right smack in the center. I think that looks nice. And I will probably age the rust on this one just a little bit with that other patina because it's. I like it to match a little bit more more. And of course, since I had that space above, I wanted to Cricut something out. So I just went to my Cricut, did a general font. I just picked the wording of rusted, rusty star and now I'm just going to do the lettering with some apple barrel white, a couple coats, seal that in with some poly acrylic, and now we have a cute little hanging star sign. So what did you think of today's video? Yes, lunch bags that I used for snowflakes, music sheets that a viewer sent me, and yes, what a way to use up and have a remembrance of that those music sheets that otherwise would be thrown in the trash. And then also we've got some frames that have just been laying around and some decent bits and pieces of flags that I can't pass up when I see them thrifting. So this was a great way to use up some of the items, get some decor for your own home or if you're a reseller. These are perfect, beautiful items. You can embellish that paper bag one any way you want. I'm pretty simple, so I just kept it kind of simple, but that music sheet, book oh my goodness you can do that with a book you can do that you know any they're all out there right now I have seen so many books without covers that wow what a per perfect craft and it was super easy yes it was a little bit time consuming but put your favorite movie on and watch away while you're you know just gluing to a form and never pass up that craft section at the thrift store and along with those frames we all have the frames in our stash because we think, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. So this was a perfect project to use those frames up on. So I hope that you enjoyed today's video. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you were new and you're checking out this content for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what I'm up to. Bye!